Hello everyone, what if I told you that Pikachu never looked like this, but has always looked like this? Or that Freddie Mercury never sang We're the Champions of the World, and only sang We're the Champions at the end of his famous Queen hit? Or that Curious George never had a tail? If any of these shocked you, you might be experiencing something known as the Mandela Effect. The Mandela Effect was first coined by Fiona Broom on her website when she first noticed that she and people she knew all had the same memory that Nelson Mandela a famous South African leader and icon, died in prison during the 1980s. In fact, Nelson Mandela was president of South Africa for much of the 90s and passed away later in 2013. So why did she remember this? Well, if you ask Broom and many others, this is due to us living in a multiverse, and our collective memories are remembering a different timeline from a parallel reality. While the multiverse theory is one that is seriously studied by astrophysicists and the like, there is another, easier explanation for what happened here, collective misremembering and trickery of human psychology. In this video, we will look at the psychological explanations behind the Mandela Effect and why the things you remember are not always the way they seem. Your brain is like a pattern machine. It loves to recognize patterns and fill in the blanks when it can so that we can process information in coherent ways. When it comes to memories, this can lead to our brain filling in the blanks in incorrect ways and finding patterns that aren't there. The Dees Rodiger McDermott paradigm is not only a mouthful to say, but is an example of how we can misremember things simply by association. You can check out my memory test video to see if you fall for it. Essentially, this is how the test normally goes. A participant gets shown a series of words that are similar to each other. Bed, pillow, blanket, etc. Later they are asked to freely recall the words that they saw, and they tend to misremember certain words, such as sleep, which is related to the presented words, but was never shown. You try it. It's hard. And it turns out our brains are very likely to misremember seeing words that were never on the list, simply because they were related to the other words. A false memory. Our brains love to group things together into packets of knowledge that we call schemas. Schemas can be thought of as webs of knowledge in our brains. We have schemas for sports, we have schemas for groceries, we have schemas for summer beach days, etc. Schemas are helpful to us when trying to remember things because it allows us to quickly retrieve knowledge at any given period of time without having to sort through all of our knowledge. But as you might have guessed, there's a downside. For example, in one study in 2016, 88% of participants of an online survey picked Alexander Hamilton as a US president from a list of names, despite him never having that title. This is due to the fact that his name is often used in history classes and Broadway musicals with other US presidents and historical figures. This leads to Hamilton's name being encoded in our brain near where US presidents are stored. So when we remember Alexander Hamilton, neurons in close proximity to where that memory is stored are set off, and we might mistake him for a president of the United States, betrayed by our schemas. Sometimes our brains even remember things that just plainly never happened by being influenced by a source in what's called source monitoring errors. Psychologist Jim Cohn demonstrated this in his Lost in the Mall procedure. In this procedure, he described to his family an imagined event about his brother getting lost in the mall. Not only did they believe it, but his brother added to the story as well. Elizabeth Loftus later performed this procedure on a larger sample and found that 25% of participants believed a described false event was real. This just goes to show that we really can imagine things that never happened based on minimal material. The examples I just showed you are obviously a little simplified to illustrate the effect better. But as you can see from these few concepts, it's incredibly easy to misremember things, and we shouldn't always trust our memory. So let's quickly go through some examples of the Mandela effect and why they might occur. Kit Kat logo. Some people remember it like this, when it's actually this. Why? Your brain is probably overgeneralizing it and inserting a hyphen because many similar words also have a hyphen. Monopoly man. Think he has a monocle? Nope. Why? Well, just a hunch, but we tend to use monocled men to represent old-timey wealth and prestige. And also, the Einstein Bagels logo guys have bagel monocles, and they are pretty similar. Berenstain Bears? Not Berenstein, Berenstain. Yup, look at all the common names with the spelling of Stein. Our brains are more used to that spelling than Stain, which is less common. Pikachu? Easy. Our brains are taking the pattern on the ears and overgeneralizing it to the tail. We are the champions? No clue, but... Actually, I guess Freddie Mercury may have said of the world in a concert recording. Every bar or club I've been to, people say of the world. So maybe people just assume that's how the song ends, and we remember that. Curious George? Come on. We think all monkeys have tails. 
why would this change here? Well, Curious George doesn't fit that prototype that's in our head, so we tend to remember him with one. And we can go on and on and on. But one thing I want to bring attention to is that the internet always tries to make this seem so strange. How could we all think this? This just adds to our false memories because they are being falsely confirmed by other people's false memories. We don't feel alone in these common misperceptions and are convinced there's a greater explanation. And the cycle goes on and on until we believe we are remembering things from parallel universes. In this video, I wanted to show you some basic psychological concepts to explain a popular internet spread effect. Obviously our brains work in complicated ways and I cannot explain all the ways our brains play tricks on us. But hopefully you understand now that our memories are not as reliable as we might think they are. Memories are sophisticated, and many mistakes can be made in encoding and retrieving them. So it's best not to trust them, even when you think you can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.